Hi guys, this is Andrew with Headphones.com. Welcome to the Headphone Show, and today we're going to take a look at the Odyssey LCD2. This is a planar magnetic over-ear open back headphone that comes in right at around $995. Let's check it out. Now, just like with my other reviews, you'll be able to find the full written review up on headphones.com. I'll leave a link to that in the description, and you can also check out the community forum thread to see what everybody else is saying about this. I'll have posted my measurements there that are done on the Gross standardized measurement rig, along with my EQ profile. So feel free to check that stuff out if you want more information on the LCD2. Now, before we get going here, I want to mention that this is the modern, let's say somewhere around 2020 version. So this is not the LCD2 classic, nor is it the pre-phaser LCD2. This is a modern one with the, I believe this is called Shedua wood. I, I, I don't know how to say that. Someone could correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but just keep in mind that my description of its sound here is only applicable for this particular one and it likely is not going to be the same for previous units. We know that there have been lots of revisions to these. Odyssey is a company that's actually been really great about transparency with this kind of stuff. So, you know, there have been revisions to the LCD2 over time. They've improved a number of things. You know, you can see this headband now has the perforations on it as well, which is a big improvement over the previous stuff. But yeah, just keep that in mind that my descriptions of this are not necessarily applicable to all LCD2s, nor will they likely be applicable to LCD2s in the future if more revisions take place. But in any case, I'm going to go through all of my usual categories. We're going to talk about the build design and comfort. I'm going to go over the technical performance, talk about frequency response and tonal balance, give some comparisons, then ultimately decide whether or not this is worth it. And to begin with, let's talk about how this looks. Now, once again, this is the Shedua wood. Uh, it just It's different from the bamboo one that you might have seen a little more commonly. This, I have to say, is probably my favorite looking headphone, or at least one of my favorite looking headphones. It's certainly my favorite looking one out of all of Odyssey's lineup. And, you know, you think about some of the other more boutique headphone manufacturers, uh, like ZMF, for example, that do a really good job of a design aesthetic that incorporates wood, leather, and metal. And you can see here, Odyssey is actually doing exactly the same thing. In any case, it feels very well built. It feels very sturdy. The downside, of course, is that this is also quite heavy. This comes, this one in particular, comes in right at around 640 grams uh, with the cable. As I mentioned, though, they have improved the headband considerably with this new perforated headband, which I find quite comfortable on the top of my head, and it's a big improvement over the old one. I used to own an original LCD2 from you know, way back in the day, and I had to use the lobe strap for that one. And they've kind of taken that idea and improved upon it. So that's really cool to see. Uh, you do get a little bit of cup swivel here. Not It doesn't go all the way around, and then you do get some extension uh, on the arms as well, which is the usual stuff for Odyssey. It has these sort of clicks on the arms, which is nice. Uh, and then you, these also are just held in with screws. So in theory, you could replace the headband if you wanted to and you know a number of other components. The pads are also replaceable, but it is a little bit annoying to do. Uh, and there are a number of other pads out there. You can get the ones from Dakoni if you want to, if you want to change the, the sound or maybe these ones wear out or something like that. When it comes to comfort, let me just put this on my head so you can see how it looks when I wear it. Now, it is still a large headphone and you may still get some odd looks as to what it is that you're wearing on your head. But at the same time, this does also capture that really luxurious high-end aesthetic that I think a lot of people like. And I don't think it would be all that difficult to explain to somebody that this is a very high-end headphone that uh, is meant to make your music sound special. Uh, speaking of the sound, let's talk about the technical performance here. What this headphone does really, really well is the sense of image clarity and detail and textural nuance that comes across uh, the ability to you know look through the window and get a clear image there and peer into the music is fantastic on this headphone in my opinion it is class leading at the sub one thousand dollar mark now that might seem a little bit odd considering many people have heard this headphone in comparison to other headphones and go wait a second no it doesn't <laughs> um, but that's only if you leave it with its default tonality if you don't eq this headphone you might be a little bit disappointed in that regard because the tonal balance is such that it doesn't actually 
uh, it doesn't actually play to its strengths. You're not getting the most out of it if you're not EQing it. But we'll talk about frequency response in a little bit. Um, just suffice to say that once this is EQ'd, this is probably the best detail retrieval under $1,000. Uh, and again, detail, that's uh, image clarity and all that stuff. Uh, also, what this headphone does fantastically well is the sense of image separation and distinction. When you have busy passages going on or you know vocal harmonies or things like that where there's multiple different layers to the music, this headphone lets you peer into to that layer better than anything else, in my opinion, under a thousand dollars. The technical performance is just that good. Um, now it's not a, as spacious of a stage as something like an HD 800 or HD 100s. It's actually quite average in terms of soundstage, but at the same time, the ability to isolate all the layers and the distinctness with which you can hear all of your instruments uh, that adds to that overall sense of image clarity that I just talked about. When it comes to punch and slam and sense of visceral impact. Uh, disregarding base level, <laughs> the overall sense of, yeah, that physicality, uh, this is one of the better planar magnetic headphones out there, and probably in part because of the double-sided nature here that's going on. Uh, but in general, this is a punchy sounding planar, but not as punchy as the Focal dynamic driver headphones like the Focal Alex or the Focal Clear or the Yalir. So while it's better than many of the Hi-Fi Man planar magnetic headphones out there, and in fact all of the Dan Clark Audio planar magnetic headphones, it's still not quite on the level of some of these really punchy dynamic driver headphones out there. And lastly for timbre, this is still recognizably a planar, but this is not like the dry kind of stuff from some of the Hi-Fi Man headphones that I think a lot of people are put off by. For me, it's actually kind of the opposite of this one, especially in the bass and in the lower mids. Um, again, that's disregarding frequency response because for frequency response related timbre, this has a very uh, muffled kind of presentation to it. Uh, but let's talk about that next. And if you guys are like, what the heck is he talking about? And you wanna learn more about this, I've left a link in the description with a full article there and there's a video where you can learn all about, you know, how to read frequency response and that kind of stuff. And then some of this will make a little bit more sense. But in any case, uh, let's start off with the base. The Odyssey LCD2's base while excellent as far as technical performance, it is not as elevated as the Harman Bass Shelf suggests. Now, it that doesn't mean it's bad. It's it's actually really well extended beyond the range of human hearing. It's just that on this one, it's not elevated. Now, you think Odyssey, you often think part of that heritage comes with this idea of fantastic bass response, and it does have fantastic bass response. It's just not in the overall bass level and bass energy. It's really well extended, and it is very, very clear and articulate, but at the same time, this is not a bass boosted headphone like the Harman Shelf would ask for. And we know objectively that most people prefer a little bit of a bass bump there. I'm no different. I also prefer a little bit of a, bit of a bass bump there. So that is one of the places that I do EQ this. Now moving into the mids, there's a bit of an odd feature there, uh, somewhere around 700, 800, 900 hertz, but it's not actually as weird as what happens after this, which if you look at the frequency response between like 1.5 and like 4K, uh, this whole range is considerably subdued. Now, what's interesting about this section is that the if you look at the shape of the curve, though, the overall balance is kind of what you would want. It's just that the overall energy level is way too low. It's like a good four or five dB too low. So that again is something that I do boost up. Now, because the upper mids are so subdued there, it means that the treble kind of stands out a little bit, but the treble itself isn't actually bad either. So for the treble, you know, apart from the fact that this 5.5k hertz peak shows up there because of what happens before, uh, it's actually reasonably smooth. You don't get a particularly sibilant kind of sound with the consonant tones like S's and F's and T's. It's maybe a little bit emphasized, but really not that bad. So it's really just that where the primary ear resonance is, where your brain expects there to be an elevation on the LCD2, it's not there. And maybe this is to do with pads. Maybe this is this particular revision. Again, I don't know the answer to that. And maybe in the future, there will be changes to this that uh, fix this. But that really is the biggest problem with the, with the overall frequency response. And that means that because this doesn't have a proper elevation there, the primary ear resonance, it comes across quite muted and muffled. Because remember, the brain expects there to be an elevation in this range, and when it's not there, you lose the sense of clarity that you get when you're just sort of normally hearing the world. Keep in mind though, of course, that this is the Harman preference curve, which means that it's what most people prefer. 
And if you look at what like the actual gain factors are of a human ear, it's even higher than this. So really with the LCD2, yes, it is warmer. Yes, it will be not particularly fatiguing for stuff that tokens those frequencies, but at the same time, it loses out on a lot of the clarity that would otherwise be there, that should be there. And this is where I feel that you really are missing out on a lot of the detail if you don't EQ. Uh, now, thankfully, the rest of the frequency response and the treble is... Uh, totally appropriate. Again, it looks a bit peaky there because of the recession that happens in the upper mids. Uh, but once you balance that out, it, the upper, the rest of the treble is totally fine. The 9K dip that you see there is supposed to be there. That's the concha interaction. And if anybody is confused by this, that is covered in the article link below. But in short, this is one of the components of the ear that the frequencies are interacting with. And so we should expect there to be a dip there. Every good headphone uh, measures with a dip somewhere in that range. Uh, because otherwise there's this really weird shimmering character that shows up. And then above that, you get an appropriate amount of air. Actually, really, really good. Uh, it's not like some of the other Odysseys that have just insane air up there that is totally out of balance. It's not like that at all with this one. This isn't like the my LCD XC back there, which has so much treble air that it's just, yeah, it's too much. Overall, what does that mean for the frequency response? Well, it means that... It's not about a poor tonal balance. In fact, the tonal balance is actually appropriate for the curve, for the way that the curve looks. It's really just that where the brain expects there to be an elevation, there's just not enough. There's just, in fact, there's none. And if there were even just like three or four dB extra energy there in the upper mids between like, yeah, 1.5 and 4K, this, the shape of this would be totally appropriate. Uh, so, you know, the balance, when I say that the tonal balance is appropriate, I mean, the balance between fundamental and harmonic is totally fine. It, you know, you don't have any weird uh, percussion compression issues or anything like that. It's just this sort of muted, muffled and subdued upper mid range that, yeah, it, it really just, uh, you, you lose clarity. That's that's all that really happens is you, the sense of overall, let's say clarity and resolution is lacking on this as a result of its frequency response. And then when you EQ this, and if you boost that range, it all comes back. So thankfully, this is a fairly easy headphone to EQ. I will have left my full EQ profile in the written review and then also in the community forum if you guys want to check that out. But remember that it's only applicable for this particular revision. And it, if you have an LCD2 from before or maybe in the future you're checking this out uh, and you're looking for an EQ profile, it may not be applicable if there's been a revision since, right? So I can't confirm that that's going to work 100% for your uh, for your LCD2. But uh, I do have a guide for you um, and again, I always recommend being a little conservative with EQ, use wide Q values, and then, you know, do this by ear more than anything else. And my recommendation for the LCD2 is to add a base shelf somewhere around 90 to 120 hertz to, to how you want it to be, maybe like 3 to 4 dB. Um, then add some energy somewhere between 1.5 and 4K. Make this a reasonably wide Q value, but not too wide because you got to watch out for 5.5K because if you boost that up, then you're going to cause some problems there and you're going to need to drop that down. That's really all you need to do with this headphone. But once again, if you do boost that range a little too much, uh, it's you're going to cause some peaks there in the treble and then you need to be a little bit more surgical. It's not impossible to do by ear. I actually didn't have much trouble doing that. But uh, yeah, for the most part, this is not a very challenging headphone to EQ. I just think that it kind of needs it. Now, I know there's lots of people out there cringing at the notion of having to EQ a headphone that costs $1,000. But rest assured, every headphone can benefit from EQ, even stuff that is you know, way more expensive. When it comes to the Odyssey headphones, I think, you know, if you're looking at buying one of these and you really want to take sound quality seriously, you're really only doing yourself a favor if you start to consider doing EQ and learning how to do it, because that will take these from a, you know, okay sounding headphone with really good technical performance to a really good sounding headphone with amazing technical performance. And it'll really allow those technical aspects that I love so much about the Odyssey headphones to shine. Um, and so I highly recommend doing this. You know, it might require changing your mindset a little bit towards EQ and the idea of, you know, what it means to buy a headphone. But these headphones, these Odyssey headphones really can handle quite a bit of EQ and that's kind of what they're all about in many ways because Odyssey does also provide their Reveal Plus DSP preset for many of their headphones. Now in this case in particular though, it really doesn't work <laughs> um, for, th for this specific uh, version of it. 
Uh, it might have worked for a previous version, and maybe they're going to update this. But um, as of you know, recording this video, I've been trying the Reveal Plus on this, and it makes the frequency response quite a bit worse, actually. So I think likely it's just a matter of the, the software needing to catch up with uh, you know what revisions are happening with the uh, with the headphones. And I do know that they try to get these to sound as you know good as they can without the DSP. But yeah, really, if you're looking at getting one of these Odysseys, you're, you're really only doing yourself a favor if you start learning how to EQ and taking that a little bit more seriously, because these really do sound amazing with EQ. Now, let's do some comparisons. Compared to the Hi-Fi Man Ananda, the Ananda is the headphone that I'm going to recommend for anybody who wants a high-end planar kind of sound without doing EQ. Now there are some trade-offs. While the Ananda is detailed and very clear sounding for its frequency response, al along with a really nice soundstage and sense of image separation, you don't have the same kind of punch and slam and dynamic presence that you do get with the LCD-2. Um, and I also don't think that the detail's quite on the level of the LCD-2. So uh, it's close, but I think the LCD-2 does still win as far as technical performance. It's just that the Ananda wins as far as frequency response is concerned. Now, again, if you are more into a warmer, like, yeah, let's say muted than muffled kind of sound there with the recession in the upper mids, then this would be appropriate. And I, you know, think that'd be fine. I just think you, you're you losing a lot of the clarity that's there. Uh, that the Ananda does have because it actually does have an appropriate elevation there. Compared to the Focal Alex, that's actually something I did in my Alex video. I compared it with the LCD2. But there's one thing I'm going to mention is that the Alex is what I would recommend again if you're looking for a dynamic driver version of that where you don't really need to do much EQ. But you guys can check out my review of that one if you're curious to learn more. Uh, compared to the LCD GX, that's Odyssey's, let's say, high end gaming headphone. And that actually has a much more agreeable uh, tonal balance and frequency response. It's It's got a much more normal kind of sound to it. Uh, but at the same time, I still think the LCD-2 does a better job of detail and image separation. And also this has better punch and slam. So that's also another trade-off. It is still a little bit more on the relaxed side. So it retains some of that Odyssey DNA, uh, but it is definitely a better frequency response than the LCD-2 compared to the Dan Clark Audio Aeon 2 Open. While the Aeon 2 Closed, I think is one of the best closed backs under $1,000. The Aeon 2 Open is one of the worst headphones that I've ever heard with the default pads. Now, there are other pads out there that apparently change the frequency response to something that is quite good, actually. And I've seen some measurements of it that look really, really nice. So that might be worth taking seriously. Unfortunately, I'm still unable to verify that. But uh, for the moment, the one that I've recently had a chance to try, I would uh, definitely take the LCD 2 over that. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, couldn't you just EQ it? You could, but the LCD2 has considerably better uh, punch and slam, and it's also got better detail, and it's also got better instrument separation, and it's also got better uh, space and stage. So it pretty much wins in every aspect except for comfort and portability. Uh, so if you're really looking for comfort and portability, I would recommend the Aeon 2 closed, not the open, because then also you get the benefit of it being a closed back. But I just figured I'd throw that in there because it's another high-end uh, open back planar. Compared to the LCD X, which is only a couple hundred bucks more expensive than this, the LCD X is heavier, but it also has better technical performance. So the detail is even better than this. It's ridiculously good on the LCD X. I do think that the frequency response on the LCD X is even weirder than this. Th that's the thing, you know, the frequency response on the LCD 2, while it is not ideal, the balance, like I mentioned, is okay. And with the LCD X, it's it's definitely not at least the one that I got a chance to review uh, recently this this year. Um, again, all of this comes down to revisions and uh, you know some unit variation and stuff like that. Where that's really the challenge with some of these Odyssey headphones, and that's again why I recommend doing EQ with you know by ear because you don't necessarily know exactly what it's going to sound like from measurements or you know reports and stuff like that. Maybe this review is entirely useless, <laughs> uh, but um, at the very least for this particular version, it, it does have a somewhat better uh, frequency response than the LCD X even though neither of them are particularly good. But of course, it's not just about frequency response. There's more to it than that. In any case, let me give a conclusion. Is the Odyssey LCD 2 worth it? Well, 
again, I think this all comes down to whether or not you're comfortable doing EQ. If you're not immediately put off by that idea, this is probably the best headphone under a thousand dollars. And I say probably because it's gonna depend on exactly that question, whether or not you do EQ. If you do, this is gonna be the best sounding headphone under $1,000 because of its technical aspects that really do shine through when you get the tonal balance to be at an appropriate spot for what the brain expects to hear. And just to hammer home that point, this is what I would buy. If somebody were like, here's $1,000, buy a headphone, this is the headphone that I would buy, and I would just EQ this. Now, again, the other side of this is even if you're not comfortable doing EQ and you want a warm sounding headphone and you're okay with that sort of like somewhat muted and muffled upper mid range, then this is fine. I do recommend it. It's just that what we know for sure is that most people prefer a little bit more energy there. In fact, quite a bit more energy there. So for most people, this is a headphone that I think requires EQ. And if you do, it is worth it. But if you don't, unfortunately, it is not. In any case, that does it for this review. Thanks for taking the time to watch it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.